Hello, hello, hello. My name is Ben Fructal, and today I'm going to be showing you a little bit more about the clarinet. This is a woodwind instrument similar to the saxophone or the flute. This one is commonly made of wood as well. You can see some of the grains along the clarinet here. It's called a wind instrument because that's how we produce the sound. Specifically, it's called an aerophone. So I use air in order to make this part right here, the reed, vibrate, and that makes a sound like this. This instrument is a little bit newer than the instruments such as the flute, which has been around for a very long time, but it originated from a European instrument called the clarion, which actually now describes a register on this instrument. But originally, the uh, BAME clarinet came about after the clarion instrument, and that actually is the model that we continue to use today for the clarinet. This instrument has one of the largest number of parts between many of the other instruments out there. So actually, I want to take a little bit of a closer look for that one. So right here. Alrighty, so here we have the instrument case opened up. So t let's take a look at the parts. So the first one that we have right in the middle here is one of the most important. This is called the mouthpiece. If I take the cover off, I have the mouthpiece here. And... I have the part that attaches the reed to the mouthpiece, and that's the ligature. This is called the ligature right here. Now, I've been saying the reed. The reed is the cane part of the clarinet. This is the part that vibrates. Mine specifically is a Van Doren reed. So to set it up, I take the ligature. I put it here first. I make sure that the ligature is loose. And then I slide the reed underneath the ligature and make sure that the reed is lined up. And then take the ligature down. Now, it's a little bit inconvenient and you might think, why don't I just put the reed on top first and then put on the ligature? But it actually is safer for the reed to do that because if we put the ligature on over that, it might actually clip the reed and the reed is actually incredibly delicate. You want to make sure that you're very careful with the reed because you can break the tip very, very easily. So don't do that. So we have the mouthpiece set up. Over here, I have two of these. We have barrels. These are both barrels. I typically use this one. We have an upper joint to the clarinet. So that goes up top. We have a lower joint. And we have a bell. So if we're putting this all together, I have the barrel. I'll put the mouthpiece on the barrel. There we go. I'll make sure that this is all lined up. So here we are with that. I'll take the upper joint and I'm going to want to gently side to side put the barrel on the upper joint. Now if you're doing this with an instructor you want to make sure you do this with cork grease but I omitted that for right now. Now this is the trickiest part. I'm going to see if I can so that you can see this. There is a little lever right here. So you want to make sure that you're holding down this key before putting together the bottom joint and the upper joint of the clarinet. So I hold down this key and then I gently, like I did before, twist side to side and then I let go. Notice if I don't hold down this key, I grind this key and this key together. And we break keys that way. So you want to be very careful when you're putting together that, those two parts of the clarinet. And finally, we take the bottom joint, we put it with the bell, and there you have your full clarinet. There are many different types of clarinets as well. So there is the soprano clarinet. This specifically is the B-flat soprano clarinet, is the one that I'm holding and playing right now. There is another one that is called the bass clarinet, and you can see that right here. That's a little bit of a larger clarinet. Um, it is a little bit longer. Typically, you have to sit in order to play that. There are instruments that are even larger, such as the contrabass or the contralto clarinet. Those ones are even bigger and play lower. So if we, we have other ones as well, such as the B, the... E flat soprano, which is a smaller instrument, which means that it probably plays, you guessed it, 
higher than the B-flat soprano because it is a smaller instrument as compared to the bass and the contrabass clarinet, which are much bigger. There are a couple of weird ones out there as well. There's the E-flat alto clarinet. We don't use that one that often. There are, um, there's one called the basset horn, and that one is actually an F. That is a type of clarinet, but we don't use it that often at all. So the way to actually go about playing this is you need all the parts that we mentioned previously. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to form an embouchure. Now an embouchure is the way that I frame the front of my lips in order to make a tone. So the way that I do that and repeat after me is I say E, U. Let's try that again because it's a little strange. E, U. And notice that when I do that, I make a very specific shape to my lips. So that allows me to be able to play with an even tone with, against the reed and support air throughout the instrument. So if I use that, I take a deep breath and I make that embouchure, e and put my clarinet in, and then I'm able to make a tone by blowing through that embouchure. Now notice the other thing that I changed was I changed the number of fingers on the instrument as well. So I'm going to play with uh, just this top hand right here, and I want you to notice where the sound goes as I lift up fingers. Alrighty, so listen closely. So did the tone go higher or lower as I lifted up fingers? It went higher, right? So as I put down fingers, the tone gets lower on the clarinet. As I lift up fingers, the tone gets higher. There's only one exception to that, and that is this key back here. And when I push down this key, what happens is I go up a register, and that allows me to access even higher extents to the instrument, such as this. Now you probably couldn't see that very well, but all I was changing is I was playing one note and then hitting this register key and then not hitting the register key. And that versatility to the instrument makes it a woodwind, woodwind with one of the largest ranges. It's not as high as the flute, and I think the saxophone can go just a hair lower, but it has one of the largest ranges out of all the instruments. Listen. <laughs> too much higher than that. I think this is a fantastic instrument to play. It was actually my first instrument. I picked it up in elementary school and just grew to love it since then. It can be played in a variety of different styles, concert band being one of the most common, but there are also cha chamber group settings where you can play in a woodwind quintet or in other small groups just with your friends coming together to play some music for fun. There also are jazz settings that you can play this in. Specifically, Dixie is one of the most common places that you can hear the clarinet. And there are so many different other applications that you can use this in that it's a really versatile instrument. It's also very portable, just as a side note. You know, it fits in a case just about this big because it breaks down into so many different pieces. So I think based off of its really pretty tone and so many different places that I can use it, I recommend this instrument without hesitation at all.